Today, we are going to answer all your questions about Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces. Well, at least I try. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Code Today. I've already made a video about Code Spaces, and you can find a link up here and in the video description below. And in that video, I went and took a look at how Code Spaces work and what they are and what you can do with that. After that video, I've received a lot of questions about Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces, so I decided to put together the seven most common asked questions and try to answer them for you. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel, just click on the subscribe button below and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any other videos like this or in the other series. As I said, those are the most common questions I received, but if you have any other questions that you want an answer for, just leave me a comment in the section below and I try my best to answer you. All right, let's dive into the questions. Question number one, are Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces the same thing? Well, they are very, very similar, um, but somehow slightly different. Uh, they are based on the same technology, which if I was to oversimplify it, it's basically VS Code running remotely on a Linux server. However, they have some differences. The very first one that is kind of obvious when you look at them is the theme. The online browser experience of GitHub Code Spaces, in fact, always starts with the white GitHub theme, as we can see here. On the other hand, the default theme of Visual Studio Code Spaces is the default dark plus of VS Code. Although this is a, of course, minor difference, but it's pretty evident. Another difference that we have, and it is more substantial, is that whenever you need to use a Visual Studio Code Space, before creating an environment, you have to create a plan, which is then linked to your Azure subscriptions. For GitHub instead, the process is more seamless. You just click on the code button and then open with code spaces. If you do not already have a code space associated with your repo, then GitHub creates one for you and that's it. Nothing else to do on your side. This also means that, at least at the time of recording this video, you cannot choose the size of your environment when using GitHub Code Spaces. With Visual Studio Code Spaces instead, as we have seen also in the previous video, you have different size of environment you can choose, and then you can change that at any point in time during the lifespan of your environment. I think this will probably change when GitHub Code Spaces will be released in GA, but I couldn't find any documentation or information about this, so I'm not too sure about that. Another thing I want to mention is that for some reason, seems like the copy and paste doesn't work on the terminal in the GitHub code spaces, while it works perfectly in Visual Studio code spaces. I guess they will fix this at some point, but for the time being, for me, it's a small limitation. Since both code spaces platform run on the same kind of technological stack, most of the things I will cover in the rest of the video will apply to both of them. And in case they don't, I will point that out. All right. Next question, how much RAM does the browser version consume? I've received this question a few times and I think it totally makes sense. Code spaces have been advertised like do your coding in any platform, any device, any environment. And for the any device part, that also means iPads or other tablets that normally have constraint on resources. Well, good news. Since all the computation and processing actually happens on the remote server, your device doesn't need to be powerful. And as we will see in a second, basically any decent tablet will do. On the RAM side, I've done some tests on both Edge and Chrome. And what I've done is working with a Node.js application and an ASP.NET Core application for a while. And for testing purposes, I've just opened one tab in the browser, the tab for code spaces, so to have a precise measurement of the RAM consumption. The maximum utilization across all the tests in Edge was about 375 megabytes. Uh, note that on my system, before opening CodeSpace, Edge alone was consuming about 200 megabytes of RAM. So I'd say CodeSpace is at a max overhead of about 150 megabytes of RAM. On Chrome instead, the max memory usage was about 420 megabytes, with an empty Chrome using about 180 megabytes, so with an overhead of about 240 megabytes for CodeSpaces. Since we are talking about browsers, it's worth noting that at the time of recording this video, Firefox is not supported on GitHub Code Spaces, while Safari has some known limitations on both Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces, which may prevent you to fully utilize your environment. Next, and this is a pretty interesting question, does it work offline? 
To answer this, we need to break this down in two parts, the browser experience and the VS code connected to a remote environment experience. Of course, if you start already with an offline situation, like on a plane, or if you don't have any internet connection, you will not be able to use either of those. But what happens if you're already working and suddenly you lose connection? To test that, I started working on my laptop on both browser experience and VS code. And then with the Wi-Fi turned off, I unplugged the network cable and see what happened. Let's start with the browser experience. As you can see here, as soon as I have unplugged the network cable, the application detects it and tries to reconnect to the server. If you try to reload the window, that will fail too and everything will stop working because the page will reload and there's nothing to reload. But if you click on dismiss, you're able to continue working. But for continue, I mean you're able to do some editing only on the files you have already opened, but nothing else. No IntelliSense and most importantly, nothing is saved. You can navigate to other tabs, but you cannot do much in there because everything happens on the server side. And even though the debugger seems to be starting, Again, that is not happening because as we've said, that will require the server to be connected. So yeah, it doesn't kick you out, but it's not really usable. Let's see instead what happens when using VS Code connected to a remote code space. Here I am in VS Code, and as you can see on the lower left corner, I'm connected to a remote code space. Again, when I unplug the network cable, the software catch that, even though with a little more delay and prompt for reconnection. If you decide to go ahead anyway, same as before. No other files can be open, no debug, no nothing. And again, this makes totally sense because everything happens on the server side. I don't even have the files on my local machine and the IntelliSense lives in the cloud and so does the compilation, the testing, the debugging experience and so on and so forth. So to answer the question, does it work offline? I'm afraid the answer is no, it doesn't. And the same is for GitHub code spaces, since they are based on the same technology. Before we go to the next question, please hit the like button below if you think this video provide value to you or you find it insightful. All right, next question. Does code spaces support only GitHub hosted repositories? Well, the answer is yes and no. Visual Studio code spaces can be initialized using a Git repo at the time of creation. And that can be done on either the browser experience the VS Code extension, or even using some configuration files, and more on this later. What that does is basically initialize and automatically clone that repository into your environment for you so it's more convenient. At the time of recording this video, the only Git provider supported for that repository is GitHub. Although work is already in progress to enable other Git providers like Azure Repo and many others. But as I said, this is only for initialization. In fact, when you're already inside your environment, you can clone and work from any Git repository, whether it's on GitHub, Azure Repo, or even private repositories, as long as your Git provider is actually reachable from your environment, so from the cloud. So once again, yes and no. GitHub is the only provider supported for initialization, and actually that is optional, but then you can use any other Git provider when you're inside. Next one, does Codespaces support Visual Studio or only VS Code. The current version of Code Spaces support only VS Code, whether in the browser experience or connecting a client. However, there is already a private preview that allows you to run Visual Studio 2019. As far as I know, the browser experience will still only be supported for a VS Code-like environment and not for Visual Studio 2019. And that means that if you want to use your Visual Studio 2019 code space, you will need to be connecting from a Visual Studio 2019 client. You can find the link for sign up for the preview in the description below. The good news is that the Visual Studio client will allow you to create and manage your code spaces with a nice guided experience. And also so that since all the compilation, debug and so on and so forth happens in the cloud, you will be able to use most of the features of Visual Studio 2019 even on low performance computer with low CPU and memory. And there are two things to note here. First is the Visual Studio 2019 version of the code spaces will be able to run only on Windows code spaces, of course, and not on Linux code spaces because of the limitation of Visual Studio. And the second one is that at least at the time of recording this video, Visual Studio for Mac is not yet supported. Question number six, 
Can I customize my code space or it's fixed out of the box? Well, good news here. Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces are really, really customizable. I will not go too in depth in this, in this video because this will require a video by itself. But if you're interested in all the customization of the code spaces, leave me a comment in the section below and I will try to make a video about this. First, and easiest way to customize your environment is using VS Code extensions. Since a code space is basically VS Code running remotely or in a browser, it supports all the VS Code extensions just out of the box. If that's not enough, code spaces are fully customizable in a per project basis. And that is accomplished just creating a devcontainer.json file in the root of your project. In this file, you can, for example, change specific Linux settings, automatically install tools, runtimes and frameworks, open specific ports, setting environment variables, configure editor settings, and so on and so forth. One of the properties of the devcontainer.json file allows you to specify a Docker file or directly a Docker image that CodeSpaces will use for creating your environment. Whenever a devcontainer.json is not present, or if you have it, but you don't specify that variables, the general container will be used, which includes a lot of SDKs, tools, and so on and so forth. Last but not least, code spaces are fully customizable in a per user basis. And this is achieved referencing a .files repository directly at environment creation. If you're not familiar with .files, those are files whom name starts with dot, and they are normally used for providing additional settings or changing application behaviors. Some common examples are the .gitignore or .editorconfig files. You can configure your .files and .file repository in a few different ways. In Visual Studio Code Spaces, you can link a repo where you have stored your .files to the code space at creation, as we see here. You can achieve kind of the same thing with GitHub if you create a repository in your account called .spaces. And remember that this works only with public repositories, not with private repositories yet. Every time you will create a new code space in GitHub, GitHub will look for this repository and start pulling out the files from it. Another way is to associate your dot .files after environment creation. To do so, just go to the settings, extension, Visual Studio Code Spaces and scroll down until you see the dot .files section. And same thing for GitHub Code Spaces. Last question, can I use custom machine for hosting my environments in code space? Of course you can. By default, Visual Studio Code Spaces and GitHub Code Spaces use Azure for provisioning that environments. And that means they are quick to create, fully scalable, powerful, and always available. However, you can decide to register your own machine to a code space and use that for hosting your environment. And that can be a VM in Azure or any other cloud provider, can be your physical computer or even a laptop. There's no limitation about that. To register a self-host machine, you can use either VS Code or the CLI. And the only limitation is that you need to have VS Code and Live Share installed on those machines to be able to use them as your code space hosting environment. And doing so, you will still have access to most of the advantages of your code spaces, including the browser experience, while using your machines for hosting them, which means you'll be able to install whatever you want on them or maybe switch them off when you don't want to use that. All right, I think it's enough for today. I think we have a lot of information here. As I said before, if you have a question that hasn't been answered by this video, just leave me a comment below and I will try to answer that for you. And please hit the like button below if you think this video has provided value to you or has been insightful. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, consider subscribing. See you soon at Coder Dave. <laughs>